So, how do you open one of these? There's no screws. Some of them do have screws, some LCD monitors. Uh, this one does not. And even if it does have screws, that's generally not what's actually holding it together. Uh, like the one I fixed in an old video a long time ago had two screws at the bottom, but it still had these tabs all the way around the outside. And I'm holding a butter knife because that's what I'm going to use to open it up. If you use a screwdriver, you're probably going to mess up the plastic and it's going to look like shit. Uh, although if it's your monitor, you know, do whatever you want. Pry it off however you want. <laughs> But I generally assume that you're doing this for someone else, uh, or you don't want it to look like crap. So, um, to look here, I've already split it a little bit, but I'll put it back. Um, the tabs, the way this works, let me put my knee up here, is this back part is has a tab that's on the underside, and then the front part goes over that. So you're going to have to stick your knife in it or whatever you're using. There's actually plastic pry tools that might work a little bit better because this will damage it to some degree. Just less than a screwdriver. Uh, and you're going to push this tab out with a little bit of force and then try and lift this away. So I'm going to be prying like that. Um, and it's scary and not always easy. But once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. And chances are, you're going to hear some popping noises, and you might even break a tab, but as long as you don't break a bunch of tabs, you should be fine. So I'm going to go all the way around this thing, punch the tab in, come on, and lift them apart, and just keep going. The, the corners, you might have to do go to a corner and then do the corner and kind of back up. Uh, at least that's what it looks like I'm going to have to do here. So let me get the front off, the fascia thing off, and the bezel, the bezel, and we'll work from there. One thing you might try is once you've got it started, you can sometimes slide your prying tool over to where the next tab is and then get it off like that. And it made a big noise, but it's fine. It just was overcoming the plastic. What I've done on this one is uh, I've gotten almost all the way around, it looks like. I've got a, one tab over here, and I'm working towards the buttons because I don't know what's going on at the buttons on the bottom. So I'm going to leave those for last, and hopefully I won't actually have to worry about it. It'll just, that'll be the end, and it'll pop right off. So well, we'll see. Ooh, as soon as I as soon as I got that last tab on the bot on the top, uh, it just kind of opened up, and I'm hoping that that means if I don't break anything, that the end will be very easy. There we go. Okay. So on this particular monitor, like these, like I said, these buttons on here, and they're actually attached to the front. So you're going to want to be careful and not rip it, uh, rip the top off immediately, because there should be a disconnect for that under here somewhere. Yep. So we're going to disconnect that. There's some tape holding it to the back, and now we got that out of the way. We'll set that off inside. And the rest doesn't actually connect very well. You'll watch out on this particular model. This isn't actually connected, so don't, again, don't rip anything off. You might actually want to flip this over very carefully. Set that off to the side. And set your screen down if you're on a soft surface like I am. Otherwise, I wouldn't put it on a hard workbench or anything like that. But, uh... Here's the fun part. Let's get to that. So, uh, over here, these are the lines, I'm guessing, going to the inverter, power inverter, or from the power inverter, uh, to the backlight, basically. And I can't disconnect those uh, from any particular area, I don't think. So, what I'm going to have to do is go over here and release this ribbon cable, which might be kind of difficult with one hand. This model's got some little side clips, and then it just comes right out. You just squeeze the sides, pull it out. Easy enough. Then, 
we can carefully rotate this up and start going a little further. Oh, even better. Even better. That comes off. And you can unplug the inverter. And now is the time where you take a picture of these to remember exactly which ones go into which spot. You know, just to be safe. Because you may not remember. <laughs> and these just have a top tab that you push your thumb on. And they, whoops, come right out. It's going to be a little bit of friction actually holding them in, even if you pull the tab. So. this and then again set this off to the side but be even more careful with it and looks like again I haven't actually worked on this model at all uh, looks like this has the main kind of logic board and this is probably more like the power supply since we've got the power going into this board and then the actual video inputs are only going into this board and they're connected as well as the uh, backlight stuff is on the power board. So, uh, we will take these screws out, disconnect this cable, and hopefully there will be a nice blown capacitor over there for us to, re to replace. So on this model, uh, we took the screws out, and there's this little thing which lifts up and pulls out. And you're going to need to remove this cable before you can remove this board. Uh, it just won't come out. So hopefully it feels like there's tabs under there. So once again, let me set the camera down. Yeah. There you go. See, it's got a tab on the top that you need to press down before you can actually pull it out. So don't break anything. And then we can remove a power board. And what do you know? Set that here, set that over here. Let me go into macro and show you the problem. So if we look right here, this is a good capacitor. And it has a nice flat top. And it's nice and clean. And we look at these three over here. The light. And you'll notice they are not flat on top. You can see the metal has been uh, deformed a bit. And as well, sometimes they actually leak out the top. You can see a little bit of black stuff in the cracks. And that's actually stuff that has leaked out. Alright, I know it looks kind of funky. But the capacitors I bought are too big in diameter to fit all three of them in a row there. And they're too tall to work when you put this back on here it wouldn't uh, wouldn't it would hit on the shielding here so had to wire them all off off board um, which is no problem because there's plenty of room over here there's a bunch of empty space and then I just taped them down so that they would stay put uh, but anyway here we are, all connected up for testing. We've got the front panel menu and power button and all that stuff. Over here, the backlighting is all connected. And of course, the main signal power, not power, uh, actual display going to the LCD. So all we need is something to plug into it. Which will be this. Come on. And some power. And it's already turning on. Hope my laptop's on the whoa, right thing. It didn't like that. I'll set this down. Turn her on. There you go. Perfection. I really wish I could keep this, but I don't own it. Maybe I'll get some use out of it, hook my PS3 up to it or something, <laughs> until I give it back. Anyway, there you have it, and uh, hopefully you can fix your LCD monitor as well. Especially these Samsungs, because they're nice monitors. It's a, a shame that they have this problem, but anyway, take it easy.